The one they call the Big Daddy Kane is here as the party animal, the sex symbol, soloist, vocalist, microphone miracle, here to react. Attack as a matter of fact, I bring forth a sudden impact. Wanna say knick knack, patty whack, give Kane a microphone, and all the other MCs are going. At the Grand Concourse, 149th Street Station in the Bronx, graffiti writers gather at what they call the writer's bench. What's good, what's good, what's good? Live from the writer's bench. New episode, I'm your man Kill, here with Bezo Ev. We got my man Vic back in effect. What's going on, fellas? Yo, peace. Yo, tonight's show, for cats who don't know, everybody up here to some extent is a digger, a lover of vinyl and records, and just, just having that vinyl. Y'all already see what's behind me. So all my brothers out here dig. So we gonna go into a show that's just talking about our top five records the the records that mean something to us it could mean a, it could be a record that you know you grew up on a record that you that a, a producer flipped uh, anything just your, your your five pieces of vinyl that mean something to you and i'm sure just like the rest of everybody else it was a hard time narrowing it down to five so this ain't gonna be the only time we do this show but you know for the night we're gonna start with five like that. So that's the nice show live at the writer's bench. I gotta give shout outs to everybody who's been, you know, commenting and supporting us and subscribing and all that good stuff. You know, after the MC battle, everybody was blowing up my phone. Like I'm the only dude on this show. You know, the rest of these dudes got phones y'all could call, you know, yelling at me like, <laughs> you know, over these things. So, you know, call these other dudes up here sometime. But yo, we just love the support that we getting. For real. So Vic, you back in effect with us. Why don't you set us off for the night? Five pieces of vinyl that just all right. I I had to cheat. Are we naming our five, but we just naming our five. five? Nah, we, five we, we, we pulling them out, B. We pulling them out. We do one by one, we do one and one, then one by one. Okay. Alright, so I will go with my first one. The joint that I just and I, I had an accurate back in the day when I was fresh and had a little 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 system in it. And the crazy thing was I was in Oklahoma at the time. So it wasn't no Funk Master Flood, none of that shit. It was Master P and all that when I was out there. But I had caught this joint and I ended up, you know how you put some shit in your car and then it just get on and then one day you be like, damn, what was that? And it was this. Wow. So the main ingredient? Main ingredient. And this got to be probably the one joint that it just covers all the bases for me, man. Um, I can't. I, I, I'm still playing this, man. I'm, I just, I just still play this like it was yesterday. You know, um, I'm not a big lyric dude, but it was simple enough that I could appreciate it. And then just the production on it, man. Just, it just was crazy, man. Especially the cut, escapism or just escape, where they flipped um, the, the uh, sun goddess. Joint by Earth, Wind and Fire. Even though it got flipped so many times, it's just the way that Pete just finessed it, like just slowed it down. I'm, everything on this joint, man. If you don't got this shit, man. I just definitely would suggest you go out and get it. And I was lucky enough, man, to cop it originally on vinyl, and it's it's two of them in here. So the original joint, if you into all that, it's definitely two pieces of wax. But and when you put it on a technique, when you put it on your system, man, it just it's old man music, man. It just sound like you know how your pop just was playing some shit, and it just sound that good to me, man. So that would have to be my number one. So I'm gonna pass the mic to whoever, whoever's ready to go. I'm gonna I'm, I'm say on that joint, man. That's that's and that's actually my favorite P and CL joint. I know a lot of people prefer Mech and the Soul Brother, but I actually prefer the main ingredient. I, I thought that was a a, a dope follow up to you know Mecca joint, but. You know, definitely dope, definitely dope joint. Beezer, what you got? Um, I mean, for, in terms of it, Vic's choice, it's funny, Vic, because I remember, uh, Kill, we was in college when this came out. We was all still at Morgan. And by that time, me and Shy was partners with the music and all that. 
And I remember the day this joint dropped, going to the record spot downtown at the harbor. And we listened to it the whole way back to Morgan. We sat outside and just sat in our car and listened to the whole album. And then rewound it, went to class, whatever, whatever, met back up, and then listened to it again that night, like all night, and just vibed out on it. I, yo, what Vic said right there with the like wrong four music, the way Pete flipped that escape joint, I said the same thing, like, yo, man, I had to use this, but Pete, it was crazy because he didn't do, if you just listen to it, the layman might think, well, you know, what did he really do? But it's like, if you listen to other versions of it compared to Pete's, it's just some way, the way Pete did it, he smoothed it out like crazy. Right. And then, and then CL, I mean, I don't know if there's a better match for a producer and a rapper in terms of like being in a group, but CL was perfect for Pete right. Rock's beat, so perfect right. for the beat. My joint was Carmel City off of that album. Oh, yeah, that joint was crazy. That's my joint right too. I still yeah. sing that first line, you know what I'm saying, Carmel City from time to time, you know? yeah. I love that joint. Yeah. But I, of course, I mean, it's Pete CL, so you know I'm a, that's going to work <laughs> too, so. So what's your, what's your vinyl, B? My number five is a, is a record, it's an old jazz group. Most of my stuff is all samples. I, I don't got no, no current, no, no hip hop and all like that. All my stuff is old records and stuff. But my joint is um, the Crusaders. Um, this off the album, the Second Crusade. It's a double LP album. This track called "A Message from the Inner City." Mm. It's actually the same cut. I think Latifah used it for UNITY. Mm. But I had this album. I remember I was walking in the village in the summertime, and um, this is one part coming up from West Fourth Street Park where cats be out there selling, you know, records, teddy bears, hats, socks, anything. And some dude just had pulled out a, a blanket and laid out mad records and I saw that album and I was like yo that's the Crusaders I looked at some of the, the cuts off of there and I see how many songs I said hold on hold on hold on I gotta have this dude wanted 50 bucks for it now at the time that was gonna be the most I ever paid for a record out of my pocket I was like 50 dollars like damn son we talked about it you know we rolled it over whatever whatever I went came back I said all right man here's 45 he's like nah 50 I said well here's 45 son he gave it to me forty five dollars. I went home that night, and it's funny. I actually, I tapes on cassette tape. I made a cassette tape with an album, so that anywhere I was, I could listen to it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't had to be in the crib, about to somebody's whip. I could throw it in if I had a Walkman or something. I could throw it in anywhere I wanted to. I could hear this album. But that song, it holds a dear place for me, Kel, because when we was at Morgan, this was one of like the first samples that I used when I started making beats again you know when we was off in college so this sample like you know what held it really did plus I paid the most I ever paid for a record for this joint at the time and then like I said when I first when I started getting back into producing again making beats this was the first song I wanted to sample it was before Latifah used it but I was like yo this the horns on this joint is so crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. That joint. yeah that's what it is that's what it is my first joint it's funny you was talking about um Talking about how much you spent for a record, because my first joint was Nas Mall's The Awakening joint, mm -hmm. and um, this was the first piece of vinyl. I went to this record convention my man, Cool DJ Frank, was at in um in Philly, and I remember going there just to cop this vinyl. That was it. That's all. That's all the money I had was like this was like maybe same thing like forty five, fifty dollars, and the same just like you. That was the most I had ever spent on a record at that time. Like. That's why our stories are so similar. It was just like, I can't believe I'm about to spend fifty dollars on one record. <laughs> like that's it. I'm used to going digging and getting dollar crates. Dollars, you get like dollar crates. Right, getting fifty. <laughs> so you know, to go to a record convention and like leave with one piece of vinyl, but I mean this album, I mean, you know, for me, a, a lot of this stuff, even my mom's being a jazz musician, you know, growing up I always fronted on jazz and so Tribe came out. You know, and it was funny because, you know, she hears me listening to Tribe and, you know, she got pictures of her and Ron Carter. You know, I'm talking about Ron Carter. She's like, man, there's a picture of me and Ron Carter right there. You know what I mean? So I never really grew up um, really listening to a lot of jazz. I grew up around a lot more jazz rehearsals from her rehearsing at the crib and having to go to rehearsals. But so many of the records I got is because of samples. So, you know, when, um, you know, I found out that Common will no ID use this for Resurrection and, you know, Pete used this for, you know, Nas is the world is yours. You know, this is what made me go out and want to cop it. But, you know, this album just put me on to my Jamal and just, 
the the incredible music he makes. You know what I mean? So, you know, the awakening again for cats out there, y'all gotta cop this. This this isn't just cause the samples, it's just some amazing, amazing music on this joint right here. Um what, what you got for us, Ev? It's so funny, man, how we be on the same page. Um my first joint, man, I gotta and I gotta give it out to my man Vic, because when I first started collecting, you know, Vic was a was a good influence because he had been digging for so long. So he, he was, it was good for guiding me. I used to work at Amoeba um, Music out in L.A. And uh, I got to give it to my man, As Oscar, there, who worked in the jazz department. He pulled this joint out, and since this time, I've been, I've been a fan of this cat. And uh, ironically, it's uh, Ahmad Jamal again. But this is, uh, let me take it out of the class. This is um, Jamal Plays Jamal. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. And this joint was, uh, you know, because... One of my favorite producers, who was Jay Dilla, he got a couple, couple joints that he's, you know, he snatched up from all, on this joint. The stakes is high, samples on here. Um, it's a, it's a bunch of joints on here actually, but just like Kill said, man, it really got me into Ahmad Jamal because now I'm just like, just on the jazz groove itself. I'm just a fan of this cat because he just like, you know, his, his, his that that 70s era. Like I don't know if it was like 72 to 76, but this cat was just putting out some really like wonderful wonderful pieces of pieces of music man so uh that's that's like my top joint there the jamal plays jamal i just I had to get to a point where i had to stop playing the vinyl because i felt like i was just playing it too much and i didn't want to run the grooves out run the grooves down and up whatever like that so i just kind of stopped playing the vinyl but this is always the joint that i go to on a on a sunday morning saturday morning just you know i just put that joint in and just let it rock so now instead of pulling out the vinyl all the time you'll find me on groove shark Bringing it up, <laughs> you know what I mean, and just yeah, playing. Yeah. yeah, so there, that's my joint right there. Jamal plays Jamal. That's what it is. I love that joint too. I mean, Jamal, my Jamal's whole discography is just, you know, yeah. crazy. Man. Yeah. It's, 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 it's real crazy. Jamal is one of my favorite joints too. What's um, the one? Um, it's one with like the, I forget the name of the album. It's a, it's a white album cover, and um, I forget how many like three or four cats use that one album. Same thing. Three or four cats use like three different songs off of that one album. Yeah, Jamalica is a joint with like the suitcase. Uh, Primo used it for I Gave You Power. Wagnon and them used it. Uh, used the misdemeanor joint because he had flipped the, the Foster Silver joint, the misdemeanor joint. And um, Cash used that. I forgot what Black Moon used it for. But um, yeah, just my Jamal crazy. crazy. Yeah, you know what's funny though? I mean, when you think about it, all three or four songs we all said were, were jazz joints. And even yeah, right. the album Vic Pick. I mean, there's a lot of jazz samples off of that joint too. Even though Pete was Soul Brother Number One, I mean, Kill, you said something about you know listening to Tribe. It's funny because I mean, my pops wasn't a jazz musician or nothing, but it was like I remember having that same con a similar conversation with him. You know, saying when I bought that album, all, you know, I put some all the jazz, all that jazz, whatever it is, the, the Tribe album and whatnot. But that album and that era of hip hop, it's what got me back into jazz music. I mean, my mother and my father listened to it when I was little, but like you said, it's like that's your, your parents' music. You you hear it, but you're not really into it until you get older, because now you can appreciate it, because it you know it reminds you of back in the day stuff. But the ill part about it is like, yo, I remember living in Philly for a hot second, and me and my man going to art galleries to see live jazz shows. You know, we'd be the only young black cats in there. You know what I'm saying? Just drinking wine and eating cheese, watching jazz shows in Philly. You know what I'm saying? But right. it was like it was because of hip hop at that time. There was so much jazz samples going around with all the all the major cats that it was like it just made you want to listen to this stuff more. And then as then you start sampling, then you start buying more. Like you said, if, you know, it's like somebody puts you on to somebody, and before you know it, you're like, oh, this this dude is crazy. You got three, four, five, six albums by this dude. Right. More same thing. Same exact thing. Right. All right, Vic. What you got up for number two for you? My number two. And before I go into that. Um, I didn't put them in any order, and it's crazy like how we vibing because um, like that's why I picked some of these albums. Like, you know, y'all are bringing up, you know, the joints that are actually, you know, got sampled for these albums. So that's that's real. That's real kind of that's kind of dope, man. Um, I grew up in a house, man. We just we heard everything, man. My sister would have to be a big influence, and then both of my parents. My dad did the jazz thing. But he was a Georgia cat. So you had a lot of James Brown, James Brown S music getting played. 
my mom, Philly chick. So, you know, you heard a lot of, um, you know, the Philly sound, but then she uh -huh. dip off, man, into the mini Ripperton type stuff. And then my sister, she's five years older than me. So it was a lot of the funk that went in the rock. So it was Fleetwood Mac, Prince. I just, I've heard so much stuff, man. My library is humongous and I could go on for days, but cut to the chase. I'm not gonna put these in any order. This gonna fuck my man up right here because uh, this is just something, man, that I think a lot of people, I don't know how you got into it, but I hope you got into it. I hope it made you go back and dig into other things. This particular album is the man, but then the dude they got on here is Ginger Baker. And if you don't know who Ginger Baker is, he was a drummer. Here you come with the back. Here you come with the back. You come darting already, see? So this, this is how I always taught Ev to dig. When you find out who these cats are, you find out who they came out with. So if you listen to Cream, you had to listen to Led Zeppelin. You listen to Led Zeppelin, you had to play some Black Sabbath. That's how I taught Ev how to do that thing. But is, this is probably the craziest album I got. I wouldn't say it's the most expensive. It just was something that at the height when we found it, me and Ev found out you really can't find these albums. And for me right. to not oh, get along oh, with it. Oh, wait, wait, before you bring it up, how you gonna do darts on the show, Vic? It's not you yet. Darts on the show. <laughs> but me and Vic got a thing called darts. And basically darts is like, you pull out that shit that ain't nobody got. And you just, you know, you, you play it and you just look at your man like, yeah, I got that. You ain't got that. So. Vic is darting right now, he, cause he about to pull out some shit you can't really find. But and, go ahead, Vic. You darting and, on the show. And That's one cool. more thing for these young cats: when you digging, man, you know a lot of cats now. Like I used to have a YouTube site, cats would hit me up. Ah, oh, man, I give you, you know, send me that on the MP3, man. I give you a dollar or whatever. It, it's digging, man. You know what I'm saying? And you go out and you find stuff, man. Like, uh, and you gotta listen to it, man, because you got some producers. And before I know we gonna get into that, well, I'll say that, but. This is the joint right here. <laughs> Fela Cootie. Uh -huh, Fela. And Ginger Baker. <laughs> and this shit just, this is the riot, man. This the post boat. You know, this this is just it right here, man. And I know it's a lot of Fela stuff out there, but this one is just live. These cats was down there at the shrine. Stevie Wonder, there's a lot of myth behind this album, man. And when you play it, man, you know, ass, ass is shaking and just, Yo, it's there, man. What songs are on that album again? Black Man's Cry. Right, I'm gonna right. tell you the two. Let's start and mm -hmm. Egg Baby O, which is Carry Me, I Wanna Die, which is probably my, just my shit. The whole shit, there's four songs on it, man. It's just one of them things, man, that I came across and you just, you just gotta find yourself trying to listen to this cat, man. It'll take you into so yeah. much other stuff, I think, so. Yeah. Feel like joints are hard to find, man. Um, it's funny because Feel Like didn't get, to me, he didn't really get popular, popular until maybe about five to 10 years ago. But um, as far as in the States and as far as like, you know, with, with cats in, in our generation, but it's funny because it's hard to find the vinyl, even working at Amoeba, I and mean, this, this Amoeba is like a where, it's like a block full of just records. Um, it still was hard to find the, the, the Fela joints. They would come here, they would come here and there, but you know, if it came, you had to snatch it up real quick because it was guaranteed not to be there tomorrow. And I was reading, it's funny you said that one more thing. I was reading an article with this cat in Brooklyn that had went to Africa to try to get ahead of everybody on the whole Afrobeat thing. And what the people were telling him down there, man, is we look at these records, man, it's, it's, it's like a, uh, I don't want to say they covered it, but they play them until the shit just play off the record. Mm. You know what I mean? So you're not going to find a lot of like, original Afrobeat records, man, because they look at them, you know, it's like a spiritual, you know, they just play it so it don't play no more, man. And then they just, you know, we move on, you know what I mean? They literally play the music off the vibe. So. That's what it is, that's what it is, that's what it is. I gotta, y'all gotta school me on a lot of that Fela stuff. I ain't really up on dude like that. Fela's ridiculous. I mean, that Afro rhythms, man, is, whew. It's some really make you get up and shake your ass type of stuff. Fela, yo, look, man, it's it's so dope that you know the song uh, "Talking Heads" once in a lifetime. Yeah. They made that for Fela. Word. Yeah, yeah. The, dude, the drummer was like, "Yo, Tony Allen, that was our Afro beat 
That was all like tribute to Afrobeat. That's just a little digger fact right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it is. Beza, what you got up next, B? Yeah, my next show. I feel bad, man. Y'all cats is pulling out the vinyl, man. It's, I ain't had time to go digging in all my crates, man. They all over the place in the crib, but I, all the records I'm talking about, I actually do own, so don't you know, nobody get it twisted. But my next joint is, again, another jazz joint. This cat, um, Brother Jack McDuff. Yeah, song, yeah, I don't know if you're familiar with this album, um, Down Home Style. On the cover, it's like a picture of collard greens, a plate of collard greens, <laughs> berries, yeah. I think cornbread and like red beans or something like that. That's yeah. the cover of the album. But there's a you know on there. There you go. Yes. <laughs> there's a on there. As she walked away. Yo, that that, that might be my favorite song. Of crazy all right here. Ever. Yeah, the this is on that song, my dude. Oh my god, yo, they so soulful. I mean, it's like that time of jazz. To me, it's even iller than, and it's going to sound blasphemous to some people, but to me, it's even iller than the days of like Charlie Parker and, and Miles Davis and them. Because what them dudes like Jack McDuff and um, Sonny Rollins and them types of jazz cats, they were blending different styles. They were doing jazz, but like it would have a real bluesy, soulful sound to it, more so than just some of the Miles and, and, and Charlie Parker type stuff. You know what I mean? And Coltrane, I mean, I, I love them three dudes. Them, them is my introduction into jazz music is those three cats. But dudes like Jack McDuff and, and Sonny Stid, Sonny Rollins, yo, these dudes just, they blended so much rhythm and funk and blues with the jazz, man. And that album, I think Pete Rodney's um, Electric Surfboard, I think it's what for that yeah. drink, for one of the million. One of the million. Yeah, so for that album, which in all honesty was the reason I copped it, because I knew Pete had used that. And I was like, oh, if it's good enough for Pete, I got to have this drink. I took it home in the first minute, first ten seconds. I heard of that song as you walked away. I was hooked, and that to this day, that might be my favorite song of all time. I love that song. Whenever I'm in a bad mood or something, I put that on with some headphones and just ride out to that joint for hours. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. That's a crazy album. All right, my next joint up is the Impressions. This is my country. <laughs> The cats who don't know the impressions yeah. was Curtis Mayfield's group yeah. before yeah. he went dolo. So this right here, um, I got put on this album because I used to be on OK Play a lot. And I used to dig on there and um, cats know I would dig. And I was like, yo, I'm always out. If cats looking for anything, you know, let me know. And um, this cat had hit me up about this and I, I had never even heard of this joint before. And then um, I copped it. And I mean, man, this this thing is just be this thing is just beautiful, man. Like, I mean, the joints on here, um, they got this joint so unusual. Can't sleep on Curtis Mayfield on the slow jam tip. Like this dude had some as much as he had the, the crazy fight the power upliftment music. This dude had some banging slow jams. Like for real, this joint on here is so unusual. It's crazy. Um, I'm I'm loving nothing. It's just, and then one of my favorite joints on here. No ID used this, but Tony Braxton offered this joint called "Love's Happening," which is crazy, crazy. No ID killed that joint, man. And um, so many people never heard it because it was like on Tony's third album, so a lot of people didn't hear it. But I mean, it's straight boom bap hip hop. It ain't no no ID trying to sell out or nothing like that. It's straight boom bap, but. If y'all don't know about the impressions, go out and get the impressions. This is my country, crazy album, love it to death. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Yeah, so what's up with you, Ed? What's your second? What's your second up the bat? Uh, I'm trying to see here what I'm gonna pull out for my second. Um, jeez. All right, I'm gonna pull. Uh, this is one of my favorite. Um, I wouldn't say the whole entire album, but it's one of my favorite Marvin cuts, and this is off of uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, album. Uh, Vic know about this. this is, uh, Heavy Love Affair. Yo, one of my <laughs> one of my favorite. nasty cut, man. What I got a favorite? nasty story about that yeah, dude. Yeah, man. Dude, so that's man. like um, one of my favorite Marvin Marvin albums, not albums, but one of my favorite Marvin tracks. I think you know. Um, the other joint, uh, I Want You, is probably my favorite Marvin Gaye album. But this is one of my favorite Marvin Gaye tracks, uh, Heavy Love Affair. It's just one of them joints, man, you, Saturday night, 
with a with a, with some wine or a beer or whatever you do. I mean, I hope you ain't doing nothing hardcore like that. And just down no dance with your lady, man. It's just one of them type. You just be in the crib like, yeah. I ain't gonna sing it for y'all, but I'm. I'm <laughs> heavy, heavy, heavy love, heavy love affair is for that that chick. It ain't for your girl. Yeah, it ain't for your girl. Say nah. I, I gotta. You, I gotta say nah. I gotta change that. If I'm trying to change things around a little bit. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't. You can't be you talk about the side joint. Yeah, you know. And then, no, I ain't saying the side joint, but the song is just when you listen to it, man. You know. That was coked out Marv, man. He was going through his <laughs> Coked out Marv. Man, that, ain't, that ain't no... I get a tear when I play that song, man. And want to... Whoo! Yeah. All right, that's what it is. That's what it is. Vic, what, what's, what's your number third piece? Did we do B's yet? Did he... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You next up the bat. Well, I'm going to just, I'm going to tail off of Ev, man. And I, I don't even want to, I can't even open it. And I'm not condoning nothing, no drugs. I know it's kids that probably watch this, but it's like weed seeds probably in this joint. But <laughs> this is the, me and Ev have talked about this album a lot, man. I think it's just something like Quiet Storm, Smokey Robinson, everybody should just have. I mean, Marv just covered everything. And then the production on this, the story, Leon Ware. Leon Ware. Yeah. It was originally Leon Ware's album, yep. and 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 Barry Gordy came in and did a piece. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like a Craig Mack situation, like that. Nah, <laughs> yeah, we can't have yeah. yeah, you on the yeah, video. The whole joint. But yeah. amazing production techniques, all that double voice and stuff. Like you hear Tupac or Prince did. This was the cat. This was the album that that first was done on. Um, just a real deep album evokes a lot of emotion in me. If I had to take an album on an island, this one right here definitely would be it, man. Um I know my Wiz is in the back, but she know man. It's 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 just a lot of everybody got a song on here, man. So, you know, just something that always meant something to me, man. And I'll just always play. You know, and they've redone it, they've reissued it, they just And if you get go on if you go on YouTube my bad, my bad, man. Marvin Gaye is on the couch, laying down, singing the joint, all coked out. I mean, it's just, it's just a crazy album, man. So, and definitely find you some Leon Ware, you know. That's what I was gonna say. If you get a chance to find some, to find Leon Ware's versions of them joints, they, they're banging. Definitely. Man. That's what it is. That's what it is. Bezo, what's your number three? And that's hard to, hard to come past that. I mean, damn. That's then both of them albums is like <laughs> they up there too with my my quick close to my heart too, man. But um my third joint is actually a cover of a Bill Withers song by the Jackson Five, Ain't No Sunshine. <laughs> Yo, anybody that's heard that joint with the drums, I mean the way it starts with the drums is just letting you know, get ready, it's about to be some shit. And then that part where it's like the breakdown where he's like, I know, I know, I know. And yo, Ghostface used that joint, Vic. I don't know if you're familiar yeah, with that track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of my favorite yeah. joints. So for that, I forget where album it is, Ghost Use, but that's one of my favorite joints on that album. But that song, I to this day, I remember where I was and what I was doing when I heard it. I was in my man's car on the FDR Drive, pardon me, on the, on the West Side Highway, headed up back up to Mount Vernon from the city. And we was at a stoplight before before you get on to the actual west side drive like you know the freeway part or whatever and all of a sudden because he had like this one like the first time when cats had like the five six cd change in the trunk right so we just sitting there riding out the whole day and then all of a sudden you know it was like a it's, a, it's downtown for a hot second and the cd's changing and this was the first joint that came on while we have the light it's all quiet it's four straight hood cats in the car at a light nodding so Michael Jackson song, my ain't no such. So I was like, yo, what, the, yeah. what is this? I, I had never heard this drink for my life. Yeah. Like, yo, this man, the Jackson Five ain't no such. I'm like, oh my god, that like the next day, if not the same day, I went out and I found that record. Like, yo, I gotta have this record. I gotta have it. And I don't even know that that record been through so. I had it so long since like the '80s that I done wow. lost the cover. You know what I mean? I just got the vinyl. I still clean it from time to time. You know what I mean? I just got it in a, in a nondescript white cover. I'm like, yo, I, I will never lose that. Yo, the drums is real crisp on that, man. They, yeah. 
I mean, that's when you, you listen to Michael on a joint like that, man. Yo, Quincy Jones said it once how the dude is, is he can actually make perfect pitch with his voice. Right. I heard, I seen an interview one time, Quincy talking about tuning the piano off of Mike's voice type shit. Like, he's that ill with his voice. Lionel, Lionel Richie thought it was a midget. <laughs> he said he went to see, he thought dude was a midget up there. <laughs> That's a grown ass man. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, you a fool, B. You a fool. All right. Next up, we got my man, Roy is. Ooh, he's coming. Mm. The coolest thing about this album to me was the cover. Like Beasley oh, was talking yeah. a minute ago about the cover. And um I was at my man Little Mike Crib and, and was digging through his closet, through his records, and found this, and I was just blown away. Um, cause I, I was, I didn't know about it before the shining. So as soon as I saw it, I was just like, Oh snap. That's where, you know, Smith and Wesson got it from. And, um, I mean, everything on here is just, it's just crazy, man. It's just a crazy album. I mean, of course you, you know, you got the, we live in Brooklyn baby, which is the, which is the anthem. Um, I mean, it's just so much stuff on here to groove on. He's a superstar. It's crazy. Um, and ain't got no time, man. Ain't got no time. And, and like Vic said, we're going to go into to this album a little later when we start talking about producers. Mm-hmm. But what Jay Dilla did to this album, yo, B, money should have got locked up for what he did to this album. And when I hear the story from Quest about what Dilla did to this and, and how humble the dude was. Because for cats who don't know, Pete used this for an interlude and Quest was saying how Dilla would just be in Detroit you know doing tributes to the producers that he loved and the way that Dilla chopped this up and made Little Brother by Black Star off of this for Cash go out there if you heard Little Brother by Black Star it's off the Hurricane soundtrack the movie with Denzel Dilla what Dilla did to this was just crazy and Quest was like yo you gotta let Pete hear it you killed this and, and Dilla was on some old nah I don't you know, like that's 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 my old head. I don't want to I don't want to feel make him feel disrespected that I took something that he used and kind of flipped it. But what Dilla did to this man, and for no other reason to buy this album than just for that, it's it's a crazy album. Um, and to me, if you a digger, you gotta have this. You gotta have this. It's like all that Roy is stuff, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I never. I hate I hate producers and diggers who say if you don't got this album, you ain't no digger. But I, you gotta have it somewhere. If you don't, you gotta be looking for it. Try to find it one day. If money is tight, I understand. But this is an album you gotta have before you die if you want to say you a digger. So that's my number three joint. Yeah, what you got, man? I don't know, you, man. You. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for my next one, I'm gonna follow it up with. Um, I'm actually gonna go to the other side, to the hip hop side for a second, and I'm gonna pull this joint out. Um, this is uh, Urban Ooh. Thurman. This joint is a <laughs> show that we did. Um, we we're talking about uh, the albums that you know kind of got slept on, and I brought up the Diamond D joint. Um, stunts, blunts, and hip hop, and um, this is uh, one of the one of the intros that Diamond D use. Um, they use it as well on this album, but they use it as a whole entire song. So this is, if people don't know, this is like most Def's first group actually. Manifest Destiny. The name of the track is called Manifest Destiny. The name of the album is called Urban Thermal Dynamics. Um, I used to be this is back in Philly, man, with my peeps, my man Cat. We used to go to this this spot on South Street. I can't think of the name of the spot. It's not fluid. Everybody's like, oh, fluid. No, it's not that. It was on the other side. And uh, every Thursday night, these these two cats, DJ cats, I think one of the cats is from the Bronx, too. And they would go in there and just, just play shit. And we, I would go in there and, and specifically ask for that song. And they would put it on for me every time. So that and the little Armoretta Sour, when I, this is back in my Camp Low days, too. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we would rock out to this joint, man. And, uh, you know, it was like being in another world. Uh, so... That's, That's crazy, I'm, B. I, I've never seen that joint before. Yeah, I found that again. Oh. It's another amoeba, another amoeba story, cause to a uh, dart. Missed that. Yeah. Kind of missed that job, man. Missed that. <laughs> I ain't make no money, man, but I got a whole lot of music from them cats. You gotta listen to that joint, man. That's 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 Def 
Medina Green, his brother and his sister. Yeah, yeah. Family thing on that joint, man. It's, it's hot, man. All right, I got to look into that joint. And he actually yeah, did a video for Manifest Destiny. All right, that's what it is. Big, what's your number four, Big? All right, now, I noticed everybody, man, they, I'm with you, Bees. I didn't really go. I, I just started so much stuff. And I was flipping through all of it, and I just saw, I kind of like went heavy on the hip hop side, because if you listen to some of these albums, there's a lot of sampling on them, and you can go back and find like a lot of cuts that, you know, and albums, albums, listen to all albums, just just don't listen to one cut. Um, This next one, I thought this cat at the time, this is one of them joints I always tell my man, I'm like, yo, when we get older, you know, and you cleaned up your will and you got your Jeff cap on and this Sunday you go get pancakes with your man. Who would be who who would be like your four tops? Get pancakes. Like, like when you see the old heads, if we go get pancakes, guys. Pancakes. I mean, you know, you I love the old heads, man. You get, a whole, you get a whole visual though. I love it. <laughs> I mean, you, know, you go pick up your man and go to the diner. And the caddy is clean, and you know you see the cat. He got his, he got his. The Dells playing real stupid. <laughs> so I always started. What would I be playing when I got to that age? And this might cause some controversy. Outside of, I, I thought he was gonna be the greatest. After this, I really don't mess with the cat. But um, I brought this out for two reasons. One, because. You know, I just dig the album, man. I think it was the one true hustler album, and then after that, the mold was broke. And two, because I have it both original on CD and on album, and this is just not about bragging, but what I'm trying to say is the original lyrics is on this joint. So on the CD side, it's the J-A with the two dots on the Y. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For all y'all youngins out there hollering that crazy shit. And then I also got it on Vine with the two dots on the Y. And I just, I really love this album, man. I mean, it just was something to me, you know, Cats was going up and down 95 at the time. We all witnessed that. You know, dudes was real fly. It was a lot of sobs. Again, I'm not condoning it. It was a lot of negative shit. But to me, he kind of took all of that, man. And he was the one cat to me that really honestly put it on a record. And then there's just a lot behind this album. This was supposed to be Camp Lowe's. I heard their second album, The Beats, but Jay-Z came through with the brown bag and you know, next thing you know, it was on his album. Um, and if you just, you just listen to it, man, it's just a really good, you know, I don't like, again, I'm not the lyrical dude, but it was something that I could, you know, it was tangible to me, man. And then the samples on here, man, it's Eddie Henderson on here. You know, they, they flipped the stylistics. Um, I'm trying to remember the dude that did this. Uh, was it Jay, Jay Ski? Ski, Ski yeah, Beats. Ski. Ski, Ski Beats, yeah, he did the production on the joint, man. So it just- Ski, it was the production too. You know, at a time when hip hop was really, and I was down there when it was turning into a Master P, you know, that type of thing, man. This this hat came out. And the reason why I had caught it really was because Biggie was on it. You know, and I played it, and the first time I was like, all right, whatever. And if you don't know, they had to reissue this twice to give it five mics. Hmm. First time it came out, so it didn't get five mics. Then the powers that be made sure it got five mics. But I honestly do think it deserved five mics. And then after that, Jay, I'm not fucking with you. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you got that there. Reasonable, that's definitely... Uh, yeah, man, that's a good question. Yeah. I mean, you can't ski and Primo and Clark Kent. Clark Kent. Irv Gotti did. Um, can I live? You know, you can't beat the production lineup on there. And my like, joint on there is Regrets, which yeah. is the Earl Clue sample. You right. Know, uh, it's just a banger, man. Some Lamar Jamal on that joint, isn't there? If I'm not mistaken. It probably um, is. Man. Don't get me a line. I don't think so. But it's not okay. Yeah, one of them joints is, is a Lamar Jamal on the home. Damn, I remember the, the track was the album. And we definitely, I know Jay is used some of my more whether it was that album or another one. Since I'm flat blasting too, one more thing. Memph Bleak, this probably was your hottest moment ever. <laughs> uh, this hottest moment was Dear Summer. Maybe that. Yeah. That was his album. 
<laughs> that was the only way it was gonna move in the units if Jay did a, his own solo. His own solo song on his man's album, the hottest song on the album. Come on, man. Yeah, that's you know that's how Jay get down. Beezer, what you got for number four? I mean, my number four, man. I, I wish I could do the, the the build up to the whole thing like Vic, man. I mean, damn, he had me on the edge of my seat waiting to hear with the song, man. man. <laughs> I'm still waiting for him to bring my, my eggs with my pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking, I'm looking for my Jeff hat, man. Where it up? But my next drink, I, I mentioned a little bit of this about this album last time. I think it's it's number two to me, the album, in terms of the greatest albums in the history of music. By a child protege, protege, whatever, boy wonder, Stevie Wonder. Now, it's not little Stevie, but... You know, the Paradise, uh, Pastime Paradise, off of Songs in the Key of Life. Yeah. Now, I don't even really want to say who used it, because I was so thoroughly disgusted when I heard Coolio's version, Gangsta's Paradise. Didn't you just want to say you ain't want to know who you did, <laughs> man? But I, I got to, because I know there's people, somebody might hear this and like, oh, that's it. What? No, I'm going to say it. It was Coolio, and he should be hunted down and hung up by them little nasty braids he rocks <laughs> using that song, man. There's some songs and certain things in life that are not supposed to be touched. You're supposed to leave it alone and let it just exist in history for the greatness that it is. And that song is one of them, man. And then for him to change it to Gangsta's Paradise. I mean, come on, man. I, he, uh, I'm still disgusted by that, man. Because the song is, I mean, the hook off of that joint is absolutely incredible in terms of what Stevie's saying, you know what I mean? About, about just talking about life and love and all the things that go into it i mean the music is ridiculous i used it in the sample for a demo for these cats i did years ago back in like the early 90s but after coolio i just i, I don't know i, I want to know i want to do it he just let me know you ain't supposed to touch this song right here but if you listen to that album and i'm sure anybody our age has heard that album a million times over yeah. next time you listen to it make sure you stop and listen to that song closely because it's absolutely incredible i love that song yeah. All right, bet. My next up to bat. This is a personal fave of mine. Um, like I said earlier, my mom is a jazz musician, and she real heavy on the flute and on the saxophone. So growing up, I used to hear Chicago in my crib all the time. Um, and this album right here is kind of really like I feel like the soundtrack to a lot of my childhood um, with her. Um, just an incredible album, man. If, if cats don't know about Chicago. Please, this is a good starter album, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Um, they've got a huge discography, but for me, this is just great. Um, on the sampling tip for, for Cats, you know, De La used a quick second of this for Saturdays off of uh, De La Soul is Dead from Saturday in the Park, which the intro to Saturday in the Park is just bananas. Like, pulling this out today, I literally just kept putting the needle back to, to that piano intro. Um, you got, does anybody really know what time it is on here? Oh, um, murder. <laughs> murder. It's big though. Um, Color My World is just, you know, it, it's, it's crazy. It's a flute solo on here. Like I said, my mom used to just practice that part. So that's like ingrained in my head. Um, crazy group, man. Crazy group. And I, I, I love this album. Just a personal favorite. Like I said, De La sampled it, but just for really a quick Saturday part, really not for too much, but not really sample based on here. I, I've used some treats off of here, but this is just a, a personal album that I got that just speaks to my childhood. So Chicago, go out there and cop this joint if y'all don't have it. Yo, fam, when you do the music, man, put that that time, in, time does anybody really know what time, time it is? Yeah. It, that's, mm. that's crazy, man. That's just his own album music, man. His own album music, man. So Ev, I see you, I see you reaching over there. Yeah, man, uh, again, I, I... You know, when we, we talked about doing the show, man, I tried to go in and grab three or five. And of course, like, I wound up grabbing a whole lot more. So I'm, I'm here having a moment trying to figure out, you know, who's going to be there. Because I know who I'm going to do for the last slot. But the number four is going to be real hard, man. But I think um, I got to go with I got to go with the brother, man. I'm going to have to pull out this. It's not like no rare album, nothing like that. But this is um, Billy oh, Paul. Yeah, Billy Paul. Yeah, this is you know Philly's own Billy Paul, um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, this is uh, one of the joints that I love off this album is uh, "Let the Dollar Circulate," 
And Ooh. a lot of cats already know that, you know, there's, there's two versions of that joint, man. And I, and uh, what, what got me to that is I think I heard the Dilla version first. And okay. I thought, you know, off, off the Steve Spacek album, and I thought that joint was banging. And then I heard the Knife Wonder version. And I'm a Dilla, I'm a Dilla fan, but Knife killed that joint. Oh yeah, my god! The, the craziest thing is I don't really rock with Knife, and yeah, Knife I mean, killed yeah, that. Joint. Killed. I ain't even gonna hold you. Knife killed that. He he murdered it. So that was one of the reasons why when I when I seen that and I heard, it, I was like, oh man, I gotta grab that album. And I just happened to be out and saw, and I was like, yeah, let me have to snatch this joint up. So um, yeah, that's my joint. Again, it's not like no big rare rare album, there, but rare fine, but. It's still a dope. It's a bang. The song itself by itself is a banger, and um, you know, just the way that it was flipped was just incredible. So, yep. Billy Paul, "When Love Is New." I don't even know the name of the album. "When Love Is New." All right, Vic, what you got for your number five piece? All right, I'm gonna I'm break the rules real quick. On a perfect day, back to the Pete Rock. I got both of those albums. The uh, Mac and the Soul Brother and the Main Ingredient. So if I had to flip them open and just Put something on as the interlude. It definitely would Donald be Bird. that right there. Faces. That's what it is, B. My next joint, I don't really get into all that rare stuff, even though this is, I mean, I guess you can consider it. Um, but this just, to me, I think one of the greatest hip-hop songs of all time, production-wise. The, the one that the, I came home, and I was coming through LaGuardia, and my man picked me up. And it was a young bird in the booth where you come out the parking lot and they were playing this on the radio and it was a hot day. And the hip hop, the song that sampled it, that came on, Benita Applebaum had came on. Yo, it just, it was a moment, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I finally ended up finding this album and just playing it, man. And they reissued it, so don't even worry about trying to go and crawl through somebody's basement to find it. But I had to go with this right here, man. This is just an amazing, and, and you know, it's some cuts on here, man. It's just not, you know, yeah, it, it's some cuts on here, man. And this is just definitely something, you know, you would want to find yourself playing, man. So I had to go with the Voyeurs Music Project, you know, to come in the knowledge joint, man. I mean, this this to me was just, you know, and I was lucky enough to, 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 to cop one, you know. The craziest thing about that for me, Vic, is I was digging once, and I'm in I'm in the crates, and I come across it, pull it out. The owner of the record store sees it. I'm like, yo, how much you like? It's not for sale. <laughs> I'm like, fam, you got it in the crates. Like he like, oh nah, you know, my girl wanted that. I was supposed to snatch that. I'm like, there's not if, for all the diggers out there. There's no worse feeling. I mean, you almost want to rumble. You just want to punch the owner and just run out the store. That's if that. you if you come across a record that you've been looking for and you got your hands on it, and and for the owner to say it's not for sale, that's like I mean I'd rather a chick just you be at that point she'd be like nah you can't get none before it, but before that happens before you got your hands on the vinyl. The you first know? time I saw it, I picked it up and put it down and went home and was like yo I put the red record down. <laughs> you know. <laughs> A couple years later, man, I was able to cop it again. But yeah, this this it was a lot of jazz and stuff that I could have really. I mean, it was a lot of stuff we probably all could have got into. And as the show progresses, you know, hopefully y'all will pick up everybody that listens or pick up on some darts as me and Ev call. I ain't gonna give you everything, but um, yeah, this this one would be for me, man. The the, uh, the ramp record. Man. That's what it is. That's what it is. Beezer, what's your number five, big? Well, I'm gonna have to pull a L. I mean, a Vic on this one, cause I had I had a hard time, man, narrowing it down to five. I mean, that's that's almost impossible. Man. But time for number one for me, and both both of them is because they hold a dear place in my heart. One is um James Brown, Papa Don't Take No Mess. I'm not even sure what album that joint is off. Of. But that was why it's so personal to me. That was actually the first record I ever wanted to sample. The first song. When I was taught how you sample and how you make a beat, and I got a chance to hear that song right there and them horns, that was the very first record. Like, yo, I don't know about nothing else, but I got a sample. And back then, I ain't had no equipment, so I had to go over like Eddie F's crib or Pete Rock crib or somebody try to do a whole beat and everything from scratch. 
not knowing how to use none of the music or nothing. And I would come through with these records, and this was the one I like, yo, I gotta sample this. So right. Papa don't take no messes. It's tied though. It's tied. It's a murder man, pack. Chuck Man Jones, son. It feels so good out, yo. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's Chuck Man Jones. <laughs> yo, uh, it's, it's funny, kid, what you were saying about your moms with the Chicago. That was my mom's with that album. She didn't, again, she didn't play, but she did everything in the house to that song. If it was cleaning, if she was doing some after work stuff, whatever she was doing in the house, unless she was watching TV, she was listening to that song. Yo. I can remember walking in my building, and my apartment was like straight ahead from the lobby on the first floor. As soon as you open up the lobby doors, you would hear that song blasting from my mom's crib. Them horns are just over and over. I mean, Truth be told, not to sadden the mood, but at her service when she passed, I actually played that song and when we was like, you know, doing the whole service. And that meant so much. That was like my connection to music. Like I would sit there and study that song like, damn, this song was like 18 minutes long, it seemed like. But it never right. felt too long though, you know what I'm saying? It just it just felt like it's supposed to be just that long. Yeah, that's what it is. That's, that's what it is. A good place for me. All right, my fifth, I'm kind of like you, Bezo. I, I had to get the Tide joint. I'm going to throw the first one up. The first one up, I, I love the album, but more than anything, I love the cover. Um, Curtis Mayfield, again, love the cover. For cats who don't know, um, Camp Lowe sampled this. Well, Ski sampled this. Uh, sampled Tripping Out, one of my favorite Camp Lowe joints. Um, but just love the cover, love the art. So that's, that's the joint for the art. And then I got to come back with my man, with the Superfly soundtrack, which I honestly, personally think, in my opinion, that this is the best soundtrack ever. Not just the best black exploitation soundtrack. Superfly to me is is is, is the best soundtrack ever. I just don't know. Curtis Mayfield was just honestly, I mean, probably you know, um, my favorite artist. You know, um, I'd be yeah. When it comes to Curtis, I kind of just get stuck. You I, know, I don't what I mean. Been there. When they came and when they was jamming and trying to get together Freddie's Dead, because that freaking intro. Yeah, I mean the whole the whole soundtrack is just incredible. The way he was able to match it to the to the to the movie perfectly, um, just as much as it's been sampled. I mean Freddie's Dead has to be sampled uh, so many times, but you know I never get tired of hearing that. You never get tired of hearing Curtis's voice. You never. Curtis Mayfield just made beautiful music. Like there are certain people who make good music and great. Curtis's music was just beautiful. Like it was just flawless to me. You know, so that's my that's my last joint right there. The best motion picture soundtrack in my opinion ever. Yo, Superfly. Can I just add something to that, man? It's funny you said it about it being the Dover's soundtrack. Is some might say Shaft is, but right. I'm with you on that. I mean, Shaft was absolutely incredible. That soundtrack. I mean, it's. My God, the amount of songs I've sampled off of that joint. But I'm with you, Kill. That 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 album right there. I mean, some of them slow songs on there. Man, like, even Freddie's Dead is a slow tempo song. But it's like, yo, you really, really, really feel the emotion in the music and in, and in Curtis's vocals and singing everything. And I love dudes like him and Isaac Hayes and, and James Brown and them cats because not one of them dudes was ever Luther Vandross in terms of their vocals. Right. They knew they lane, and they were incredibly gifted writers and musicians themselves. So it was just like it made sense. And Curtis' voice, with his falsetto singing and stuff, it was perfect because a lot of his stuff was real heavy, real bassy and thick with thick bass lines and nice drums. So when he put that voice on top of it, it was just like lightning dropping a feather on on, on something like ah, it's just perfect. <laughs> and, and it's, I'm going to say, wait, yo, Curtis Mayfield, for me, is just like, yo, you that dude, man. And for you new diggers and pseudo diggers or whatever, <laughs> you got to check out Curtis Mayfield's whole team. I ain't going to give you no names, but you got to, like, really get in the catch hole. I, I slipped one in there, like Leroy Hudson. You got you to gotta get into the whole thing. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm good. <laughs> I ain't good. Don't come too much. They can do some work. They can do some work. work. They got to put us some work. Work, definitely. Thanks, man. What All right, Al. Uh, what's your number five, B? My number five, which is kind of like my number one, not because of the song so much, but because this was the first record that I'd ever played and just fell in love with. 
and I was a, I was a kid. I was in elementary school. I don't know what grade I was in. And this was actually one of them, like, my daddy records. This was in my pop crates. And he had already went on to gospel music. So he wasn't even playing the stuff no more. And I remember being in the crib and, go, and looking at these records and pulling this one out. And I remember pulling it out. And when I pulled it out, what got me was the cover. Because the cat just looked so smooth on the cover. But then the cover opened up. And what, what it is is Marvin Gaye's Trouble Management. Yeah. So I remember pulling this out, and I was like, damn, dude, look good. What's it got the boots on? I was like, yo. And I remember being a kid and actually putting this on, and I barely knew what to do with a record. And I put it on, and I listened to it, and um, it was uh, T Stands for Trouble, man. Mm. It was, like, ridiculous. You know what I mean? It's that, that break. Oh, my God. Oh, just that's the break that actually, Jeff and Cash, I mean Jeff and Prince used, right? I yeah. think so. Well, I think a lot of people flip that, and I actually was thinking of that soundtrack when you and Bees was on the Curtis Mayfield. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like, yeah man, the, the 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 Marvin Gaye joint is up there. Gaye joint, yeah. So this was this was like my introduction to vinyl, and I didn't think I I was gonna be collecting music, um, collecting records. But I remember when I, you know, with my pop pass, I was like, yo, I need, I need that record. Like, so this is a personal, sentimental, but, uh, you know, it was my first, man. So, yeah, Marvin Gaye, Trouble Man. That's what it is. That's what it is. So, another ep live from the writer's bench. You know what I mean? What you got, Vic? I just wanted to put one thing in, man, because I know a lot of times, like y'all said, y'all get calls on these shows, but it's a rest in power moment to my man, George Duke. Especially hey, since we're on here talking about digging, man. And, you know, definitely go check his catalog out, man. George Duke just got a lot of bangers. And the same thing I told Ed, if you get into the George Duke, you got to peep out the Frank Zappa. You know what I mean? So rest in peace, man, to that brother. You know, uh, my man Chris, Philly Cat, another super digger, which is on a whole nother level. Me, me and Ed from the boot him up, man. You know, really put me up on that. So peace to George Duke and his people, man. No doubt, no doubt. You had something else to say, Big? Yeah, I was just gonna say, like, I think Vic touched on it a little bit before. When, um, when, when, like, any not any new cat is checking this, and you know, we hear us talking about all these old records and what they mean to us, and like Vic has mentioned a couple of different people that play on song on albums. One. I guess the uh, tip I would give diggers when you first start now, find somebody that you like and then look and study the credits, see who wrote the music. That's how you will find out about Leon Ware. You know what I'm saying? If you study Marvin Gaye's catalog, if you never really, if, you know, if you heard him before, you ever heard of Leon Ware. And that's how you find out James Brown had, you know, Clob Stubblefield and Mad Other Cats, Bootsy Collins played bass and his brother played bass for James at one point. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. But... Bobby Bird, you know what I'm saying? You know, Fred Wesley, these dudes that played, and I'm talking about James Brown in Parliament, the, the people that played in their bands had solo careers that you would go and cop and dig some of their stuff and you'll find bad samples on there too. So the best, best tip I could ever give any new Jack trying to learn how to dig, find an artist that you like, and don't be afraid. If you see an album cover that just looks so crazy, you're like, I gotta take it home, do it. Because I'm telling you, there's a reason very often that the person made an ill album cover because conceptually they got an ill idea and it didn't just usually it doesn't just go from the cover it, it translates through the song and through the music so you you get that dope record that dope artist you see who's working with them the writers the, the musicians on the album and you'll start doing research on them and you're gonna find it then these cats played on that one he had a solo album you start finding more and more and more it's like family trees man and like all these different cats as well as other influences, like Vic was saying, you're going to find other artists that you would have never thought a dude from the hood sitting around listening to Led Zeppelin or something, but you see the influence in other people that made you come to listen to Led Zeppelin, whoever. So that's that's a big, big tip right there. Just to, and if I can add, just to, just to, to, to piggyback on that real fast, um, I would say that that's an important thing with the music today. I know, like, now we, we download and we MP3 and we're getting that stuff from iTunes and we don't we're not looking for the credits anymore. And it's very important to look at the credits because, you know, that's people's careers that you see. You see the other work. And like, you know, like these will say, you're seeing who, who played on what. Also, too, you can look at different labels. You know, there's different labels on certain time periods that just put out, like, good quality stuff. Yeah. You know, 
I ain't gonna give you no names. <laughs> no names, but it, if you see a Chinese dude with an afro and a bunch of brothers on the cover, <laughs> I might want to check it out. <laughs> check it out. So, uh, so we'll, that's, we'll, that's important. We'll get to this joint um, even more on two or more shows about digging, but I always tell cats there's always a, a mixture because if you're looking for samples, a lot of times you don't have to find it on a great album. I found a lot of ill samples on dollar records and the rest of the album was garbage you know and and then so even as a digger i had to grow from just looking at samples to actually wanting to hear good music so there are people there i don't know if we got two different names for them but i know cats who dig exclusively for good music i know cats who dig exclusively for i don't care what it is as long as got a dope sample and then there are cats like i think most of us are is where we're doing both you know so yeah, you brought that up Cause I'm gonna be the controversy with that whole Jay Dilla. Well, we we got that coming, Vic. We got that coming, but oh, whoa, whoa, controversy! No, 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 no. So live from the writers' bench. There you go. I'm your man, Kill. Yes, Vic, Bezo, Ev. Our five albums that meant something to us. Subscribe to us. YouTube.com/slash Live from the Bench. I just put an ill spoiler up there about, you know, a quick three-minute synopsis of what this show is about. Go check it out. Subscribe to us. Leave some comments. I'm your man, Kill. Go listen to them songs we all talked about. You're going to love them. Hey. Well yeah. done. Yeah. All right, fellas. Salute. Peace.